Hello, this is Hector Vladimir Bello. Today I am going to be making an addendum to the 24th episode show, the Living Off the Grid in the City radio show. This is an episode uh, titled Sustainable Homes. And this is a show that I believe I should have made during the Living Off the Grid series, but is now going to be an addendum. It is a show that encompasses all of the, or most of the technologies and the methods and ideas in one small summary, in one packaged show uh, called Sustainable Homes. All of the ideas, technologies, and methods that will be described, briefly described here, will be, will have to do with sustainable homes as the title. Okay, just to continue with uh, the show, which is called Self-Sufficient Homes, self-explanatory title there. First, we'll begin with insulation. We'll describe insulation. And uh, we'll see what it's for, how can it be used, how can it benefit you to be off the grid, to be completely self-sustained when it comes to building or using a home, a self-sustainable home. And then uh, after I've described all of these technologies, all of these uh, methods, uses, uh, materials, I will go ahead and put it together and describe how a home can be and work self-sustainably green completely off the grid and this is completely possible for most people here in the United States and for a very large amount of people also worldwide especially uh, considering considering a lifetime of opportunity meaning a uh, full adult lifetime uh, I dare to say that most people would have the opportunity to before too late uh, they would have an opportunity to uh, achieve, achieve this dream if this is what they would like uh, of being completely sustainable and at the same time as the gentleman on that video I mentioned said uh, this is not only for you this is not only for your benefit this is for the benefit of, of humankind mankind for the benefit of the planet for the benefit of many many generations into the future for the benefit of the environment you will be in all effects be rendering obsolete all of the hazardous and uh, harmful industries that are causing all kinds of havoc when it comes to the environment, conflict, war, abuse. I'm talking about the uh, coal industry, the oil and gas industry, the gold industry, the silver, precious metals industries. You will be rendering, if not all, at least majority of these industries obsolete and repugnant. Uh, gradually, although eventually, so we'll begin with insulation. Insulation again is uh, the material, the space, the barrier you put in between you or your environment and a an unwanted environment. For example, a hot environment, cold environment, dry, too wet, whatever it may be, an insulating barrier or an insulation is basically just that barrier, just that uh, separation between you and that environment that you're trying to avoid or trying to uh, at least make a little better, make, make a little more comfortable. For example, a wall from an average home here in the southeast US is basically wood. Wood and drywall and at, at times not too often some brick uh, 
maybe some mortar for the exterior walls. But for the most part, it's just wood and drywall. Okay? And uh, plastic siding or uh, vinyl siding. And this is not a great insulation material. Uh, excuse me, there's also one more there, which is the actual uh, either fiberglass or uh, cotton or some sort of other fabric, fibrous fabric or material for insulation that is usually uh, put in the exterior walls. And if you've been in the average home here in the United States, you've seen how they're constructed, you've seen how they're built, they're put up in a week, you know, using a small crew, and uh, that tells me that they're not very durable for one, and not, they don't use top methods, quality, long-lasting methods and techniques and materials. And uh, they're made very cheaply and very rapidly. And again, not using uh, the best suited materials for each job, for each uh, section of the house. For example, the exterior walls I just described, what uh, materials are usually used for insulation, and they are not that effective. They do provide some sort of insulation, but they do require a lot of uh, energy, intensive energy, some large amounts of energy to keep the home comfortable. Because to begin with, they don't use these materials and methods and, you know, uh, more insulation, better insula insulating materials because they got in their minds already to begin with. They are uh, assuming that you will be hooking on to the grid and using tons of energy to cool, keep the uh, home cool, to keep it warm in the, sun, in the winter, cool in the summer, and they're just assuming that you will be having your air conditioner on 24-7 during the summer and your heating on 24-7 during the winter. So they're not going to spend the extra funds it would take the extra effort, the extra materials, and the uh, better methods it would take for you to, for the home to have better insulation, thus better energy efficiency. That's not their main concern when they're building the home is, uh, their main concern is just cost savings so they can maximize their profits that is a very a real <clears throat> a very real flaw not only with the monetary system but also with the way homes are built with the culture around it and with the interests and pressure and influence of the power companies that um, basically drive some of the some of the uh, growth and the uh, new home construction and uh, also the people's uh, mindsets they control very much people's opinions when it comes to energy energy companies and industries spend many of their resources perhaps millions to, to billions of dollars per year in ensuring that uh, people view them as necessary as conserving as uh, caring for not only them but also the environment they make sure especially the most polluting industries in the world are the ones that spend the most money in advertisement and uh, mind control as I call it uh, publicity to make sure that people view them as clean as caring as investing in clean energies in uh, protection of the environment etc when in fact they are the ones doing most of the damage environmentally I digress in that point moving on uh, or rather keep going on insulation insulation 
can be a deal breaker when it comes to efficiency. That should be the first thing you look at if you build or if you modify a home or if you're going to buy an existing home. Look at the insulation, look at the amount of insulation, the quality of the insulation, not only in the walls, exterior walls, interior walls, but also in the roof. Uh, not on the roof, but in between the roof and the ceiling or the attic area. If there is such thing as an attic, make sure that the uh, attic is well insulated with quality insulation. If this is a uh, choice you can make, if you can afford to make that choice, a lot of times people uh, are unable to even choose because they are just so tight when it comes to uh, you know the funds they have available or the time both or just the uh, availability of homes in the area are not uh, large enough to have to consider even a choice as far as uh, you know, efficient energy efficiency. Energy efficiency is probably the least looked at uh, feature of a home. Speaking not only for experience, but for the experiences of, that others have shared with me about home buying or purchasing a home, even if it's not the first time. People ra rarely, if ever, uh, inquire about the efficiency of a home when they're buying. The first thing they look at is how it looks. Uh, does the home look nice, pretty, big, size? Um, second thing they look at most likely is the location, which you know, looking at location is not a bad thing. But they look at location in another another aspect. They look at the location, not as not for energy efficiency or uh, is it you know in an area where it's going to be uh, shaded or with wind airflow to cool it during the summer and will it have enough sunshine to heat it up warm it up in the winter no they don't look at these things uh, these aspects of uh, location they look at location as far as uh, is good shopping areas around? Are the neighbors okay? Are the neighbors the right type of people? The right race? The right culture? Are the neighbors close? Far away? Is there uh, good schools around? Is there, you know, again, shopping areas that I like around? This is what people mostly look at from my experience when they uh, are out shopping for homes and I'm guilty of that because I was a victim for a long time uh, of this erroneous and lost culture that is of consumerism and just blind uh, you know just stupid non-informed ignorant uh, consumerism of just things that may may make you look more affluent more uh, you know richer better whatever uh, this is what people look like look look at when they're going to purchase something uh, very sadly and very disturbingly they don't look at things because of their utility and their advantages. But many times because of their looks, which is again disturbing and uh, very uh, depressing time, many times. So insulation, make sure insulation is something that you consider. Not only when you build, if you build, but when you buy. And you can, it's also, you can look at the place that you're living in right now. Uh, if you're planning to make any kind of uh, improvements, any kind of modifications, additions, whatever. Insulation is definitely something you want to uh, consider. 
again because it's going to save you tons of energy in the in the long run especially and uh, will help you get off the grid if that that is your goal it could it could at the very least help you save energy moving on to another part of your home self-sufficient home hopefully or a home that is uh, that's hopeful hopeful to be self-sufficient one day if not right off the bat roofing roofing and ceiling are two things you want to be looking at again for new homes purchasing a home or existing your existing home structure even if you want to build whether it's yourself or a construction group you want to look at the, at the roof especially this changes depending on the area where you live the climate the environment the climate uh, excuse me the temperatures the amount of rain the amount of Sun you get the amount of snow if any again how cold hot it gets if you live in a very warm area such as desert areas, such as uh, you know, southern, the southwest, the, the southwest United States, southern California, you know, uh, South Texas, or uh, you know, even here in the southeast, you may want to consider a white or light-colored roof. The material is not that much importance as is the color I actually I'll take that back material does matter color matters quite a bit perhaps a little more than uh, material the, mater the color will and you know we're assuming this is a durable color preferably uh, something that is infused into the material via, you know, treatment, paint, high quality uh, coats or whatever. You want like shingles, for example, lighter shingles. They uh, put sand or some sort of uh, light colored uh, material, granules on it to make it white to make uh, the color white reflects most of the light radiation away from it bounces out and only a very minute amount of radiation filters through meaning that it heats up a lot less than black or dark colored roofing for example shingles uh, if you've ever done a on a roof dark roof in the summertime as I've done you will notice how hot you can get up there I'm talking hot enough to melt your shoe soles like happened to me uh, and this is here in the southeast where it's not extremely hot like it is uh, in some of the southern southwest or southern West parts of the United States, let alone in other parts of the world like North Mexico, the Middle East, the Arabian Peninsula, or North or Saharan Africa. I mean, these places, desert desert areas, could get so hot that uh, all that should be taken into consideration color of the roof uh, <clears throat> again you want it to be light if it's a hot area where you want the heat to stay out of your home of your of your attic and you want it dark in a call uh, cold place like Canada and the northern uh, hem uh, the northern hemisphere countries excuse me the northern uh, trop uh, latitudes such as you know the ones where Canada 
Europe and uh, Russia are, and also the south, the far south uh, latitudes. Uh, you want darker colored roofs in those areas, of course, to uh, absorb as much radiation and thus heat as possible because you want that heat, uh, the, the very small amount of heat that makes it to those areas. You want to retain those for your home. Uh, insulation is not as necessary when you have these types of roofs that attract, that uh, retain heat or repel them. For example, if you live in a hot area like here in the southeast, you want to have a light roof. That way you don't have to have as much insulation inside of your attic when you have one. You could have a little less insulation. More is never um, bad, but less can save you money. And um, if you have insulate, uh, excuse me, a light roof on a hot area, you're gonna be saving not only on insulation costs, but also in uh, cooling costs. You may not have to cool your home as much, or you may not have to cool your home at all using electric electricity, for example, or any other method of cooling you may need, uh, via, whether it be fans, whether it be there be uh, some sort of other type of refrigeration uh, using gas or whatever so uh, the cooling costs could be substantially decreased even to the point where zero cooling costs are incurred this would be op optimal and very very uh, preferable where uh, you know you don't have to have an AC unit at all you could build a home and this is a perfect area here in the southeast the southeastern states florida georgia alabama <clears throat> excuse me alabama tennessee the south south carolina uh even the virginias north carolina all these states here mississippi uh, louisiana even oklahoma and texas i mean west texas uh, east texas all of these states here in the southeast are in an area where you barely need any sort of heating and cooling if you build your home uh, with sustainability and, and energy efficiency in mind and cooling and shading and all, all of these things that you can do to have your home as, a, as energy efficient as possible. The thing is that it goes against the grain, it goes against what the power companies want it goes against the uh, wishes and aspirations of the power companies they do not want you to be naturally they do not want you to be self-sufficient they're out of a job they're out of an income they're out of a profit if this would were to happen even if it's just uh, you know small scale or a minority of the population that that's this that adopts the, this lifestyle where they are off the grid they would still lose even if it's a small percentage of the population and it's a threat to them it's something that they would not like spreading out they would not like to you know get get around the idea of people getting off the grid because it is a clear and present danger to their subsistence Clearly, they do not want this, and again, there are many reports, official, credible reports about companies planning, companies very diligently uh, investigating and even charging people getting off the grid. They're making sure municipalities, cities, states, counties are have rules in their books about people attempting to get off the grid, making them, in many instances, illegal. And this, this is because they claim it's a health issue and it's a safety issue, but in reality, let's be honest, 
it's spot bar minus spot. Uh, then protecting their pockets, protecting their assets, power, their livelihood. Understandably, they are corporations, which means corporal beings, in theory, organisms that look out for themselves. Uh, it's a collection of people, in simple terms, that are looking out for their jobs. They're protecting their job security. How can you blame them? But someone, someone's or a group of people's little jobs are not worth just wasting away the planet, wasting away lives, wasting away whole communities, societies, races, whole habitats, animal habitats, plant habitats, and uh, sacrificing those is just not worth it. A little job here and there is not worth throwing away uh, what, it, what some think is basically our whole livelihood, our whole planet. And even if it's not that, even if it's not a worldwide, planet-wide problem, do we really want to pollute whole rivers, whole lakes, decimate uh, plant and animal habitats, decimate, you know, the health of people? It's not worth it. It's not worth one life to protect a whole corporation. Of a whole corporation's worth of profits and jobs and this and that, it's not worth one single life, one single human life. That is my opinion, and I'm sure the opinion of countless others. Moving on to food. Food is something that is extremely important for someone to have if they want to be off the grid not only to eat on a day-to-day -day basis but also to have the feeling of independence to be confident enough that you will have something available whatever whatever may happen with the economy whatever may happen naturally with the environment any sort of emergency situation uh, catastrophe natural disaster, you will sleep better at night, will be a more confident and secure person, and proud also that you have food available, that you know you will have food available, uh, even in the worst, of, or the worst of circumstances, as I just mentioned, natural disasters such as floods, hurricanes, uh, earthquakes, tornadoes, not only those, but also uh, periods of extreme drought, dry periods of no rain, periods of uh, turmoil, social, economic. There are so many ways that catastrophes and disasters could occur. Fires, uh, war, Civil war, international war, attacks, terror attacks, biological attacks. It doesn't have to be, you know, Armageddon. It doesn't have to be the end of days. It doesn't have to be something so unlikely, like, uh, you know, another 9 11 attack or anything like that. I mean, it could be just a simple flash flood that affects your neighborhood directly takes away a couple of homes in your in your city your neighborhood and floods a br the uh, the only bridge into your town as something as simple as that that is very likely in many areas could cut you off cut your city your town your community off from society from supplies effectively for weeks on end it has happened it will happen it is only a matter of time 
It depends on the place, of course, on the likelihood, but even on the unlikely places, some things that nobody thought would happen have happened, and even several times in a lifetime. So don't think for a second that you're completely safe from all sorts of disasters. If not natural, man-made uh, crises could occur any any day now, regardless of how uh, stable and how peaceful it may be right at this moment. Tomorrow it may be chaos beyond belief. And you want to be ready. You want to have food, first and foremost. Uh, of course, after after water, but we'll cover food first. Food production, it is something that is quite a skill to man, uh, that needs to be mastered before crises strikes. Food production is not terribly difficult, but it does require practice and information. Just uh, attempt to grow fruit, attempt to grow vegetables on your own, and you will find out this very fact indeed very quickly. Uh, the first time your vegetables spoil and your uh, fruits and, and uh, other plants don't grow or dry up or die out, you will soon find out that uh, food growing is not as easy as it may look. It's not as straightforward as just planting a seed. You may never see that seed. You you may never see that seed uh, bear fruit uh, if you don't know how to, when to, and where to grow food. Uh, information is the number one ingredient. Patience. Uh, physical mental skill, the know-how, you also need the resources, of course you can't grow food, you can't grow pecan, excuse me, you can't grow mangoes or pineapples in the northern tundra in North Canada, of course unless you have a greenhouse and other you know very expensive and intricate equipment to go with it for the most part you cannot grow those things in the northern the northern countries but you can grow a vast array of other things potato berries strawberries etc so uh, you know you got to know you got to have the information you have to know what to grow when to grow it where to grow it again how to so I would recommend you gain all that information if living off the grid is something that you want to do. Uh, depending where you live, if you live in very warm climate, tropical areas, you are lucky in this sense. For the most part, you can grow just about anything there is to grow. All you gotta do is, you know, learn how to grow it, what to use, um, and even in these areas it, it does take a skill to grow food in any kind of, um, you know, re repetitive and uh, successful way. You still need, need to have information and skill to grow food. It is a lot easier than in, you know, other countries where it's cooler, less energy, less sun, less sun, but it is, however, difficult, and you need to be prepared. There are many things you can grow, especially here in the southeast U.S. You can grow potatoes, you can grow vegetables, tomatoes, peppers. 
onions you can grow a lot of you know fruits peach corn peanuts you can grow um, watermelon cantaloupes a wide array of things nuts pecan when you move further, further south to Florida, you can grow just about anything else, including those that I just mentioned, mango. This is South Florida, Central South Florida areas, orange. You can grow grapefruit, uh, apples, strawberry again. You can grow all kinds of fruit, uh, avocado, you can grow a wider range of things if you live in the southern uh, latitudes, tropical, even the subtropical areas of Florida, Texas, <clears throat> even South Louisiana, South Mississippi, South Alabama. You can grow a very wide range of things. Um, look them up. I'm not going to list them all. You can use land in your backyard. You can use land from friends or family and or family. You can use uh, even public land, which is, you know, even though this is not quite recommended, but you can go to a public little spot somewhere, find your little secret spot. You don't have to claim it for you. You don't have to plant a flag or or uh, fence it in and go plant you a couple of trees, a couple of plants, a couple of vegetable plants. And, uh, you know, assuming this is a safe area that is not fenced in, that is not highly protected, that is not highly watched, you can go out and plant your tree and, uh, or trees and go pick some fruit, go pick, pick some nuts pick some whatever vegetables it may be that you planted it could be close to your home it could be a little apart from your home who said that you are not able to do this this is something that you can completely do although I highly recommend that you do this that you plant in your own land if at all possible Just continuing this topic of sustainable homes, food growing. Again, you can uh, grow food in your own land, someone, el someone else's land with their permission or in public land in a little bit of uh, secrecy if uh, that's all right you would like to take. Not recommended, it, but it is actually a uh, possibility. It is a option for many people. You can grow a variety of foods. You can uh, use your piece of land in your backyard, front yard, side yard. You can uh, do hydroponic farming, which is basically uh, growing food indoors in a uh, greenhouse for the most part, most uh, commonly. And you can uh, grow in uh, not necessarily in dirt, but you can uh, grow in water, you can grow in it other mediums such as cotton, you can grow uh, vegetables, for example, in uh, sand or any kind of other uh, synthetic medium. You can find out a lot more details about how to do this, but this is a possibility where you can grow, like, for example, in inside of uh, containers, jars, uh, structures, you can place uh, plants in, inside of a medium and uh, grow food using uh, whether it's sunlight, direct sunlight through a greenhouse or out in the open or you can also use artificial lighting. Uh, you can grow hydroponically, meaning stacked up <coughs> It doesn't have to be really stacked up. It could be a single layer, but uh, it's mainly in an indoor environment, controlled environment where the uh, climate 
temperature, uh, lighting, heat, all that is controlled. But uh, for the most part, it's easier if you live in an area where this is a possibility, it's easier outside. It is much more natural and uh, it does take a lot less skill and knowledge to do. You can build your greenhouse, especially if you live in a cooler climate. Build a greenhouse with wood and uh, uh, plexiglass or flexible, you know, crystalline panels. They could be also glass panels, panes. Build your own uh, greenhouse. It doesn't have to be anything big or anything you have to go be able to go into standing up it could be something small it could be something you can open up lids something you can open up the top part and uh, you know tend your plants that way water them whatever and close them back up uh, it doesn't have to be large it could be small it could be like one pane up top it could be several you know it doesn't have to be airtight so uh, look at online how to build your greenhouse and uh, they have several many different models you can choose from and you know different sizes and uh, different uh, for different budgets different skill level look that up I recommend it especially if you live in a cooler place uh, it is highly useful to be able to grow year-round or you know, even in the cooler months. Uh, privacy for self-sustainable homes is takes a new level of uh, meaning. It takes a new level of priority to my uh, opinion, estimation. Because, especially if you live in a city limit, county limit, where you have neighbors, where you have officials, Potentially officials go by checking on you, law enforcement. I'm not uh, by any means, in any sense of the word, encouraging any <clears throat> illegal behavior or illegal practices. But <clears throat> living off the grid, as I have mentioned in a previous show, calls attention calls attention of people that may not be your friends, may not like you, may not want you to be doing what you're doing, may not, may feel threatened, they may feel uncomfortable at the, le at the very least, may feel uh, that you're doing something that may affect them in one way or another. However unfair this feeling may be, it's a reality. Um, neighbors will be curious they will be uh, asking questions at many instances and if you're not the friendliest of people if you don't talk to your neighbors regularly they may grow suspicious and even report you even lie about what you're doing they may they may make up their own mind about what you're doing they may find an explanation and make up their own stories about what you're doing and you may be reported may be brought up to the uh, attention of the authorities, the city council, the city uh, municipality uh, authorities and personnel, who may also not be accepting to what you're doing. Even if it's completely legal, you may want to provide some privacy for your off-the-grid home. You may want to plant trees, hedges, um, brushes, shrubs, anything that could create a little bit of a uh, barrier between you and pesky neighbors, pesky city officials or uh, community uh, leaders or law enforcement. Because they're people too, they make their own prejudgments, they prejudge you, they may feel, make uh, threaten again, they make think that you're weird 
or uh, you know somehow trying to do something illegal when you're you may not be so you may want to protect yourself to avoid all this uh, harassment to avoid any kind of you know inconvenience to you and your loved ones if any you can do the next best thing from uh, planting trees all around you again providing that barrier for privacy you can do fencing whether it's chain link or metal uh, excuse me uh, wood fencing you can uh, go a little fancier and do brick even concrete cinder blocks if you're able remember that many areas many uh, municipalities require some sort of per permit for you to and do any kind of structure build any kind of structure especially when it's going to be uh, as permanent as brick or concrete and reinforced concrete steel metal you may want to check with your municipalities and uh, make sure that you comply with uh, whatever permitting may be required for building those but uh, privacy fences and privacy perimeters are very useful for those that are completely off the grid again because uh, this is also depending on the area you live you may be well very very welcome to uh, live off the grid you may live in a off the grid community where you need no privacy uh, but if you live in a average community where everyone around you will be hooked to the grid you may not want to publicly uh, advertise your uh, your goals your methods your structures they may be weird they may be again threatening and unsightly to others that may not think like you so why uh, inconvenience yourself and bring yourself uh, even risk by <clears throat> shouting out to the world what you're doing you may want to consider protecting yourself make sure that the area where you live allows such practice legally there are plenty of areas where living off the grid is, is illegal I believe Florida and other states have ruled against it uh, excuse me have ruled it illegal to be off the grid sadly and disturbingly enough um, I'm not sure to what extent this is the case but there are several credible reports that uh, this is the case that uh, you know many states cities municipalities don't allow you to get off the grid uh, their grounds for it are for the most part um, safety concerns health concerns etc and uh, there is very likely a um, interest, economic interest concern there hidden as well. But if, of course, it's not as advertised, or if it's not at all advertised um, for the public, interests are, of course, very likely involved such as power companies gas and oil electric power companies conventional of the conventional type they very much support such uh, laws and regulations where being off the grid is completely illegal of course uh, being uh, taken into pretext or using as a pretext uh, health and safety uh, especially if you have children in the home they they love uh, piggybacking on the uh, excuse of children 
being in the home, not being old enough to be exposed or be, uh, you know, be victims of your uh, actions, especially uh, dealing with uh, health concerns. So, privacy may be a um, something that you want to do if you do go off the grid, do do build or buy or modify your home to be self-sustainable to 100% or near 100%. Again, fence, hedge trees, plants, etc. are options you can consider for that. Another area I want to cover today, I'm going to be wrapping it up here soon or speeding it up to cover the rest of the things I want to cover. Water collection. Water collection is of utmost importance when you plan to be off the grid for obvious reasons. You can go without food for a week, perhaps, or you cannot go without water for more than a day or two. I'm not going to discuss air, oxygen, which you cannot go without for more than maybe a few few minutes uh, because obviously air is free at the least at the very least at the moment and uh, very likely for the for the far future water however is not free for the most for most individuals potable drinkable drinkable water it's not free you have to get it delivered to your home, whether it's by pipes, truck, water service, as far as bottled water, a combination of the three or two, uh, but you still have to pay for it. The minute you don't, your water is disconnected, it's cut off. Whether it's, again, city, water, through pipes, or delivery. The minute you don't pay for it, it will be cut off. You don't want to be in that situation, <clears throat> especially for the ones I mentioned, where uh, emergencies, crises, catastrophes, natural disasters may take place. Uh, very likely water will be one of the first things that will be affected, for your water supply, whether it's through drought, lack, of, lack thereof water, whether the water becomes contaminated or even uh, when there is too much water again being contaminated like flooding which may uh, interrupt your usable drinkable potable water you want to have secure safe clean water available in case of any of these uh, circumstances that may arise which again are not uh, remote, are not that hard for them to for them to arise. Think about it. When was the last time? For those of you living here in, in these southern states, even in the continental United States, when was the last time a a catastrophe occurred in your state? In your state, consider your whole state, not even the whole country. When was the last time a catastrophe occurred? Natural disaster, uh, you know, crises, natural crises, or even a man-made crisis. When was it? When was the last time that it occurred? It may not be that far. It may be within recent memory. It may be just a few clicks away, searching of, of your favorite search engine within the past decade or so. So it is not that remote. It doesn't take that many unlikely circumstances for a disaster to occur. So keep that in mind, please. Again, water could be collected several ways. Rainwater could be collected using several methods. Look, in, look them up. Uh, water catching systems are abound on the, on the internet. For both for sale and for construction you can use your roof as a water collecting system your roof with gutters 
which cutters are basically a channel for waters to be for water to be collected and channeled and directed a certain way and something as simple as a big drum or bucket or a collection of buckets could be used to collect this rainwater. Of course the rainwater that you collect may be dirty by the time it makes it to your container but it is however treatable and filterable. You can filter rainwater very relatively easy and drink it. If you collect rainwater in a, for example, a uh, pool, above ground pool, if you have one of those or if you get one of those, it doesn't have to be big, it could be one of those inflatable pools. Stretch it out, inflate it out in the, in the backyard right before a storm, collect rainwater, and for the most part that water could be drank straight off if that container is clean enough. Uh, yes, I know a lot of cities have air pollution where they uh, recommend you not drink the rainwater because it may have collected on its way down a lot of polluted particles and uh, you may not want to drink that water right off. But in many instances it may be safe even then, even in, in polluted cities, polluted areas. It may be safe enough for you to uh, use at the very least during a emergency situation. <clears throat> Nobody will tell me that rainwater, rainwater that may have collected a few particles from the air a very small percentage of that water will have uh, you know reasonably those particles you will not you're not gonna tell me that water traveling down miles and miles uh, downstream from pipes and tanks that have been sitting there for ages you're not gonna tell me that that water is gonna be a lot more safe to drink and consumed and not to mention the chemicals that water has been treated with you're not going to tell me that water is going to be safer to drink than rainwater collected in a clean container directly from the rain <clears throat> rainwater is among the cleanest water available you can encounter naturally and uh, my opinion is that rainwater is among the cleanest safest water to clean again many ways to collect rainwater many technologies many methods look them up I'm not gonna detail them I just did uh, tell, give you a few broad ideas about how to clean, collect rainwater but there are many methods many models of technologies you can build using simple uh, readily available items materials and um, things such as wood, lumber, cloth, you know, uh, large plastic or rubber materials such as uh, materials that you can uh, get from uh, inflatable toys, inflatable tools, excuse me, inflatable pools can have uh, a bunch of buckets let's say those you know five gallon buckets that you can buy at the store at the hardware or Walmart Target any of those stores you can buy uh, buckets for less than five bucks a piece let's say you want to invest a hundred dollars that's uh, at five bucks a piece that's 20 buckets you can buy for about 5 bucks a piece or 100, 100 bucks so uh, 20 buckets laid out in the yard when it rains you can collect at least in a good storm long lasting storm you can collect at least half, half a bucket or 2.5 gallons per bucket 
and start with that. That is a good amount of water that can last you about a week if you ration it right during an emergency. And if you do that a couple of times, I mean, you could have hundreds of gallons of water within a you know a few a few month period. A couple of months, two or three month period, period. If you get if you live in an area like here in the southeast that rains regularly throughout the summer and spring and sometimes all throughout winter. And uh, that's something to consider. You know, you could come up with your own way to collect to collect rainwater. Unfortunately some areas, some counties, cities consider rainwater as their own resource or as their private resource as ridiculous as it sounds and as stupid and backward primitive as it may be to claim that rainwater is yours I don't care how big and how powerful you think you may be you had nothing to do with the creation with uh, that process with you know the invention or the bringing about of that process that rainwater falls from the sky from the clouds having you having nothing to do with it I don't care what king or uh, you know kingdom you may be part of if it falls on me on my person on my private property I'm going to collect it I don't care what you say as a city as a state as a king as a president as a government and I am saying this out loud in this radio show please come get me I am catching rainwater and I don't care what you do I will always catch rainwater I don't care what you put in the books I don't care what who, or regulation you come up with just to find that uh, rainwater is your resource uh, tough luck I will not uh, obey those rules and I encourage anyone and everyone in every part of the world to disobey such law uh, to basically cause change uh, and cause some reflection in those that make the laws that you're being completely ridiculous if rain falls on me that I should uh, on my property, on my little head, that you tell me that I'm not uh, allowed to open up my mouth and drink it. So basically, uh, you're telling me that I'm not allowed to just stick my tongue out and catch all the raindrops I could. You have got to be kidding me if you actually believe that anyone, uh, especially me, will abide by such law. Moving on. Energy. What this show is all about. What this uh, episode series for living. And I'm back. Sorry about that again. Uh, again, this show is all about energy and energy. Uh, technologies, methods for energy sufficiency, energy independence, uh, the use of solar energy, photovoltaics, lots of people know about it, and it's among the most popular and uh, more accessible right now for anyone trying to uh, be off the grid, be self-sustainable, be green. And not be not only because I'm in, involved in the industry, but because obviously it's the most affordable for most people. Most people don't live excuse me. Most people don't live in in uh, very high wind areas, so wind energy is not accessible for most people not only because of the resource is not as prevalent 
and abundant as the sun but also because the technology is so much more expensive and hard and more challenging to set up and make work uh, so I won't waste much time discussing wind wind is an option for many people many areas if you are in such areas look look for it look up, look it up find out about it uh, if you live in the you know the plains of the United States and the Midwest you know the northern state northern states such as Canada the, the Canada bordering states of the United States the Northwest her sun is not as abundant as it is hot here in the south southeast southwest it, it may be a better option for those areas but again even those areas uh, it would take a lot more uh, even those areas could take more advantage from the sun than the wind uh, especially if you have a limited budget photovoltaics could be placed on your roof could be placed on your yard could be placed on your boat on your RV on your truck on your trailer it could be placed on a temporary structure it could be just laid out on the floor on the ground on your yard taken back out it's very flexible as far as its uses and also physically uh, they have flexible panels now where you can just carry them out they don't have a hard heavy frame you can just carry them out lay them out connect them up charge your system and roll them back up at the end of the day stick them back in the house or, or whatever uh, dwelling you may be storing it in whether it's your RV trailer so uh, photovoltaics are a very attractive option for many many people perhaps most areas here in the United States so look it up check it out consider it get it if you want to get off the grid that is your prime way principal way to get off the grid and uh, remain within budget this show is primarily for those with a limited budget if you have an unlimited budget uh, you may not be listening to me right now you may be already off the grid if that is what what you wish this show is mainly for those looking for ideas looking for uh, some support looking for some uh, inspiration to get off the grid if you have unlimited resources, which I know of no one that has unlimited resources or funds, then you are on a whole other level. Uh, certainly a level way outside of the uh, target of this radio show. You can also use wood to provide for energy for your home. When I say energy, I don't just talk about electrical energy, such as photovoltaics. You can use wood um, to heat up your home, to cook, to provide light, etc. You can use coal for about the same stuff, the same things, heat, light, cooking and paper and charcoal as well you can go with geothermal again i mentioned this briefly in an earlier show geothermal is expensive geothermal takes a lot of uh, resources funds time skill planning to do is not available in our air in all areas you may live in an area where you may have water just a couple of feet below you you may have bedrock just a couple of meters below you or you may not have the funds to do it there, there may not be 
you need to live in an area where there's considerable warmth underneath you, you may live in a very cold place where this may not be an option. If it is an option, you should, and I encourage you to find out about it, look it up, consider it, get it done if you um, are able to do it. That is one way to heat up your home, cool your home, maintain a very comfortable temperature in your home year round. And it is not as difficult and as expensive and as, and as uh, painful as it as many make it sound, and as you may think it is, so investigate. You can also look into construction of your own home. I touched upon this earlier, but I'm going to go a little deeper. Constructing your own home may be a daunting undertaking. Maybe damn near impossible for, for many of us. Need resources, money, uh, especially in the monetary system of the United States. You need time that you may not have. You may have a full time job that's demanding. You need space, you need land, you need rights. A lot of people don't have rights, sadly enough. A lot of people are here illegally, a lot of people are uh, oppressed. A lot of people are second, uh, what may seem or feel like second class citizens, where they are uh, denied a lot of perks and advantages and rights that many other people are automatically given. Uh, again, sadly enough, a lot of this is based on background race, uh, creed, color, upbringing, pedigree, you name it, disturbingly enough, this is many times the case. But if you're able to construct your own home by some way, by any way, and many of us are, then by all means, if that's what you want to do and you're able to do it, please do it. By all means, you can construct your own home and make it completely off the grid, self-sustainable, green, right off the bat. That is probably the best way to do it, to build it from scratch. Modifying an existing home is very costly, very challenging at times, and sometimes it's impossible, depending on where you live, what the construction of your home is. Very old home. We live in a home in an area where changing it up substantially is not an option. It's legal, maybe legal. Not the point to a point where you can't do it. And uh, building from scratch is very, very attractive as far as uh, cost is concerned, as far as your options you basically starting from a clean canvas where you can do build to suit you can build to your liking and not uh, only to your liking but also to the best design uh, one available for your area and two possible for your area and three uh, you can choose a design that is uh, as efficient as possible for that area, for that environment. You can choose to build a dome, very one of the strongest, perhaps the strongest shapes for a uh, you know dwelling structure, or you can build. As I mentioned before, a home made with renewed, uh, recycled materials such as tires, beer soda can or soda cans, even uh, you know bottles. 
there are many many options out there to come up you can build using uh, trailer con uh, trailer containers those you know big rig containers that a lot of times go uh, spoiled or they break or they become unusable for some reason they're disposed of a lot of times by big trucking companies or shipping companies and uh, you may be able to get your hands on one of them you know if you do your homework do your searching and uh, find a good opportunity you may be able to get a hold of them they're made of very durable uh, metals including steel aluminum Very, very long lasting, durable, and they can be modified. Most of the time, it's not very, very good idea to use them right, right off the bat like that without any kind of modification. But you can modify them to where you can insulate it and make it a comfortable place to live. A very cheap uh, option at times, and you can even get your hands on two or more of those link them together and make a very comfortable larger multi-room home with them uh, stories and plants about these models and other models of trailer container homes are on the internet look them up search them they're just a few clicks and keystrokes away uh, that is a very very viable viable option a very uh, cost effective option for those trying to get off the grid especially if you have land or are looking to purchase your own land perhaps away from a uh, pesky city and, uh, community officials you can, uh, you can choose an area if you're able to choose an area to purchase or land that's quite private. You can park your trailer and away you go building, modifying, and living off the grid. You can, I'm not going to go into many of the details of how to and now what to do with these. I'm going to leave that up to the listener to look those up. I'm just throwing out ideas. That's all I have time for. You can also uh, come up with your own designs using logs. You can use, uh, you know, mounds, and believe it or not, you can use caves to live off the grid. You need not live on uh, above ground. You, can, you could live very well on the ground, especially hills, mountains, of course, given that you are able to do these things and it's legal and it's uh, feasible for you and it's, uh, it's not life-threatening or you know, unsafe to do. And uh, also consider other people, consider your family, consider your friends and how that's going to impact those people it may not be an option if you are married with a family it may not be an option if you have close family members that need your attention or if you have a job in a certain area that you cannot afford to leave it may not be an option for you to go to the mountains and live in a cave it may not be an option for you to dig a hole in your grandparents home or your parents home in their backyard and live in a hole you may not be safe to live in a hole you may be in a low-lying area where it floods so think about all those factors especially environmental factors and safety factors and take them into consideration and make a good sound safe 
and uh, judgmental decision where you uh, you know be smart about it don't for the sake of living off the grid don't just go crazy and uh, put yourself or others in danger or in harm or in very in a very inconvenient um, situation I will leave it at that for now again living off the grid in the city this is a addendum for the show and I hope you enjoyed it and that uh, it brought some information to the repertoire of information you may already have from the rest of the shows and I hope uh, to attract your attention for other videos and other uh, audio recordings me Hector Vladimir Bello I uh, thank you for listening and or watching have a good day Hello, this is Hector Vladimir Bello today.